We picked up Petra, an Austrian parish worker, and left Iringa for our last adventure. Our driver, Julian, pointed out the fresh elephant tracks where we were standing. It didn't make me want to go very far into the bush. Oh, oh, look at it. Uh oh, it's running. <laughs> After about 125 kilometers, we came to the entrance to the Ruaha National Park. We were greeted by hippos and crocs in the greater Ruaha River. It was a contrast to the some 10,300 kilometers of scrub brush, billabob trees, and desert in the park. This was the only place we saw wild animals. The bad joke was that everything that moved had been eaten or poached. We were really glad that we stopped and that Tanzania was far-sighted enough to set aside almost 25% of their lands as national parks. There are more than 400 species of birds in the park and some 60 mammals. Apparently, wild dogs are becoming scarce. We felt fortunate to spot them. We went to Tanzania to see for ourselves the reality of their need and the available resources. We came back aware of the great complexity and contrasts in the culture. Back in Dar es Salaam we saw the local artisans and did some last minute shopping. We visited Seacliff, the European tourist area on the ocean near the embassies, and saw the bombed out U.S. Embassy, their social security building, the station for the only railroad line through the country. We've been 
We were greeted warmly by Brother Jerome back at the guest house, where some were suffering from malaria. And then the rains came, and it was time to leave a place that in a relatively short time had captured our hearts. It's like Mark commented, when hearts are open and God shows up, hope is reborn. Yeah, we